and beware of spoilers. I am Adam Hawkeye. Hmm. See, here's the thing. I don't want to come off as biased, because out of the gate, I kind of expressed my misgivings about Hawkeye. Namely that, like, the trailers didn't paint a picture that I would have needed to necessarily have Clint in this show for it to work. Um, and I think that's kind of a, um, what's it called? A, a misfire. If you have a show and the titular character, and I understand what this show is going to be. This show is designed to pass the torch, as it were, from Clint to Kate. That's the point of this show, is it's, you know, it's kind of like how Captain America, or Falcon and the Winter Soldier, was about, you know, passing the torch from, uh, from Steve to Sam, and then Sam grappling with what that means. WandaVision was about Wanda dealing with the effect of Endgame, and then coming into her own as her own hero, or in this case, probably probably villain, you know, going forward, and, and, and doing that. And Loki was about bringing Loki back to life. But all these shows kind of feel like you don't need to have seen them to get to the next part. Like, I don't need to have seen WandaVision to understand Doctor Strange into the multiverse of madness, I don't feel. Because WandaVision kind of... While it is self-contained, it's like, well, what, what, what are we going to get to at the end of this show? Okay, Wanda is going to, you know, be upset. I think of the shows, it's probably the most required, but, like, Loki doesn't feel necessary because it's like we saw Loki get resurrected. Like, Sam, we saw accept the shield at the end of um, Endgame, so passing it off back to the government and then reclaiming it is part of his character arc, to be sure, but at the same time, not something that we have to grapple with, like, to understand where we're going. Now, if we look at, like, where we are going with, um, what's it called, with Wanda, with, uh, with, with Hawkeye, I think if Kate Bishop just showed up, it wouldn't be as weird, um, if she was just taking the place of Clint, um, because it's like, we got introduced to Clint, in media res, and we didn't need to have an explanation as to who Clint is, what is Clint doing here, why is Clint here, and, and all of that. Um, that said, I feel like, um, what's it called? I feel like this show kind of needs to, you know, not have Clint there. I'm sorry, but here's the thing. The, 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 the quote-unquote glue we're going to have linking this into the mainline MCU as we know it is going to be the introduction of uh, Yelena. We know Yelena's going to be there because the post credit scene from Black Widow had her meet, you know, Madame Hydra. And then on top of that, Florence Pugh has been on the, on, on the, on the press tour, so we know she's going to be there at some point. And... This show is that could be the cohesive way to get her introduced into this wider world. She could be her Nick Fury. I don't think we necessarily need Clint there to do that, especially considering we meet her and it's like she already knows how to do a lot. Like, we see her, like, that's the thing. It's her watching Clint is kind of like the moment of Wonder Woman on the, uh, as a kid, like kind of like the moment of Wonder Woman watching on the cliffside as they're training and then miming along with it. That's kind of her moment. Um, that's kind of similar. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, a cool moment. But it, I, I, again, I don't think that you necessarily need him to be a main character. Because for the first two episodes, it's kind of like he's there because you're expecting Hawkeye to be there for this show. He hasn't had an active, you know, point on the plot yet. Because the plot is, you know, at the he comes to New York City to see, you know... Rogers the musical, which I cringed into next week watching. I'm sorry. Maybe it's just me. You know, and maybe I'm in the minority on that. But it's dumb. I'm sorry. I, like, and this is what happens when we go to these series formats where it's like we get this dumb bullshit like that. Like, a lot of what happened in WandaVision was dumb and silly. And it's just like, that's not what I'm here for. Just give me what I'm like. Make it a cohesive seven episodes or a cohesive five episodes and, and maybe cut out some of that shit. Like, with this, it's six, and you're still padding the runtime with that. You're padding the runtime with him going to this live-action role-playing thing to to try and get the Ronin armor, and it's like it just kind of feels silly, and like they're trying to kill time, and and ultimately that's what Clint's 
plot line up until this point has felt like. It's like, well, we need to kill sometime, so what do we do? Oh, okay, here's what we'll do. Um, he will go and help to get the Ronin armor back. Why? Reasons? Because, like, at the end of the day, like, he gets the armor back, and then he's like, okay, now I gotta go meet the tracksuit mafia, and then it's like, well, you know, if you're gonna do that, and then set the record straight that way, then all that time we spent at this, at this live-action role-playing thing is pointless. I you considering that, like, okay, well, now we know who, like, they, they know who Ronin is, and yeah, there are other people who are gonna want to get revenge on Ronin, but it feels kind of pointless. And the thing is, too, there was a, uh, a path to do this properly and not have it feel weird. What could have been done is just, you know, Kate gets the Ronin outfit and, you know, and then is in that situation and then has to fend for herself. Hawkeye doesn't need to be there at all. And, like, if she just is wearing the outfit when they get attacked by the tracksuit mafia at her apartment, they could, she could just leave in the outfit. She doesn't need to have Clint there. Like, none of this is necessary for Clint to be there. And you could have this story where it's like she needs to come into her own as a hero, and she gets mixed up in this on her own, and she got to do it all herself, and, you know, that would work, but it seems they're too bogged down to make sure Jeremy Renner gets his, you know, gets his screen time. They could have done without Jeremy Renner entirely, and there's nothing in these first two episodes that have shown me anything about it. And the thing is, too, it's like, I don't understand why Linda Cardinelli didn't go to New York as well. Because there's no reason why. I mean, I'm assuming it has something to do with, like, availability. Like, schedule availability. Um, to shoot that. But from a, a narrative reason, they don't really give a reason why she didn't go to New York with her kids and husband. And it's not like they're divorced, which would have been a understandable thing. Um, I don't know. I, like... I just feel like these first two episodes were kind of a misfire. Like, I, I, I love the way that Haley Steinfeld plays Kate. Um, because there's a certain, like, dry sarcasm. And there are a few laugh-out-loud moments. There are a few really good jokes. Like, you know, when um, when he gets, you know, captured, quote-unquote, because he gives himself up. And he's just, like, talking to him, like, look, I came here on my own. because And they're like, no, you didn't. And it's like when they're kidnapping him, and he's like, guys, I can see through the bag. Like, it's all kind of like, he's he's grizzled, he's done it before, and he knows what he's doing, but that's not, an, like, his whole attitude of, I don't care, I want to just get this over with and, and be done with it and go back home, like, that's cool, and if you're going for, like, a lethal weapon vibe between the two of them, I guess that that works, but I don't feel like this necessarily needs, you know, I don't need these, like, I, I don't need Clint there. You can do the show without Clint, and it would be just as interesting. Um, because on her own, we know that Haley Steinfeld can hold, like, can, can hold her own. She got the stage presence to, to do this on her own. Like, she can do, like, she, she was the lead in Bumblebee, where she's acting against a CGI robot. Like, she was, you know, Pitch Perfect 2 and 3, she was in, she can, and she's holding her own against some, you know, major talent in those movies. And, and that's, you know, a big deal. So... You don't, she doesn't need to be handheld by Hawkeye. I, 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 I think that's fundamentally my biggest issue with this, is that, you know, you're doing this show, and, and you're, you're making sure that Jeremy Renner is there, but all he's done so far is pad the runtime out to be an hour long instead of a half hour long, when the episodes could have been a half hour long and just been Kate figuring this out on her own. Especially considering her mom owns a security company, and she can do all the tech stuff herself. So there's really no need for Clint to be there. Um, hopefully in, in the ensuing episodes they prove me wrong and it's like, oh, here's why Clint is there. This is what happened, like, that, that Clint needs to be there. Otherwise, um, she would get in trouble and there'd be some problem. Like, her putting the, the butterfly band-aid on the cut wrong is not enough reason for Clint to be there. I'm sorry. Um, so we'll wrap up there for today. Tomorrow we will have The Flash Armageddon Part 2. And yeah, we'll be back with that. And until then, have a great rest of your week.